Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow Fury CC3 with possibly mess. Yep. Okay. This is Shadow Fury CC3 with another exhibition match. This time we're gonna have Scuzzy and Player One versus Kmar and DD. So, a couple of these players are quite good, and the other couple are by the LOs not as good. At least not as experienced in team games. Or at least hasn't worked out well. But we'll see how it goes in this game for them. It's Gonna be interesting to see how that pans out. And we're gonna be on Calamity, which is a map that I haven't really shown yet, so I might as well just go over first. Not sure how much has been played, but first thing to note is that all the metal spots are two metal each. All of them. So that's fairly simple there. Every single metal spot is two metals, so every metal extractor or sorry, 1.77. So every metal extractor we see is going to increase metal income by 1.77, so about two. As other than that, it's very choke point focused. You can be seen, it looks like it might be a yet another, kind of like Ravaged, a StarCraft 2 map design. It's definitely in the same vein. I don't know if it's actually taken from a StarCraft 2 map design, but it's definitely very choke point focused, very cliff focused. Not particularly focused on rolling hills or anything, but it's nice to see more maps like that, just for the variety. So, on to the game. We have DD starting in the Southwest corner of the map, hasn't chosen factory yet. Kmar in the southeast corner of the map, going for Cloakybot factory. Scuzzy in the north center, going for Shieldbot, immediately going for Dirtbag. And... Player one... What the heck? Okay, that... That shouldn't be. Not sure what happened there. Anyway, player one in the northeast corner of the map, going for... Well, hasn't... Going to be going for Cloakybot, but hasn't built the factory yet. Might not be realizing fact plop is a thing you need to take advantage of. And Air Factory for DD. So very quick air start on one side. On... Well, on the blue side. KMR did go for Koki, however, and DD... Sorry, Skazi and Player 1 going for Shield and Cloak, respectively. But it does mean that DD has, as is pointing on the chat, a bit of an information advantage. KMR and DD will be able to see what's going on first, and more prominently, Skazi coming in with the dirtbags will be about 10 seconds before they get in, where the Avengers are just going to come in basically right now. Sorry, not the Swifts, not the Avengers, they're renamed. The Swifts will be coming in right about now, as the Dirtbags come in a few seconds later, but that does still give a fair bit of information to Deeves. Unfortunately, Deeves is letting those Swifts attack Kmar's base. Need to keep going off and seeing Player 1's base. More Swifts are coming where they came from, though. Deeves needs to expand more. This calm must not be idle. There's no reason this commander is idle, there's no reason this factory is idle. Don't know what DDs is paying attention to, but that needs to be doing stuff. You hold shift and you click, that's how... that's... Yeah, if you're having a hard time micromanaging, just as a general piece of advice, if you have a hard time micromanaging your construction and economy, shift click is your friend. I mean, in general, shift click is your friend, but especially in that case, shift click is your friend. So, Glaives for Kmart, Glaives and Conjures, kind of an even mix, well, three to one mix of the two. And fairly quick caretaker for Kmart as well, probably a little bit too quick, actually. Although, if the commander does manage to go through unimpeded, and it looks like it will, that caretaker should be fine. It's actually going to be coming up within about a minute, so ultimately that'll work out. Actually, that, that's not a bad time by Kmart. And... Skazi, on the other hand, not going for that quite yet. Probably going to use this Convict to bump up the factory once it gets to that stage. This point, though, only 10 metal and focusing much more on energy. Yeah, Skazi has 20 energy compared to 10 from either the blue, pa blue players and player 1. Doing a bit better with 14, though, admittedly. It's a bottleneck for the blue players. For player 1's not a bottleneck, but for Kmart and DDs, it definitely is. So DDs. Focusing possibly a bit too much early on in defenders. That's not something you need to do at this stage. One defender would be fine, but three defenders is a little overkill, especially given that Deeves is the aggressive player. Deeves went for air first, and if you're going for air first, you are on the offensive. Because you're basically trying to attack well before they get anti-air, and at this point, neither neither red team player is actually going for anti-air, so it's not the biggest deal. I mean, Deeves can get away with waiting around a bit, but why? Unless you're waiting to build units, which I suppose they kind of are, but... Unless you're waiting to build units, you're the aggressive player. You're the player that needs to be going out and fighting. And their character is up at about the right time, so that works out. For Kmar, I mean. Yeah. DDeebs. 
needs to be aggressive needs to be the aggressive player and also probably needs to be more of the production rated player i'm rather surprised that ddbs has not been expanding it that quickly switching over to light vehicle right off the bat too i really don't know what they're thinking there's yeah there's really not much here nothing to suggest that kmar has been telling ddbs what to do to switch ddbs just doing that on their own kmar on the other hand is just expanding they're sending out a bunch of metal charges around the map Setting up some defenses as well, establishing a close front line to Skazi and Player One, particularly to Player One. Skazi hasn't been similarly threatened. Deebs doesn't have much ground presence, but they have planes. And Kmart even pointing out in the game, be more aggressive. The air player is the aggressive player. The air player starts everything. If there's anything that's going to be started, it's the air player that does it. They are, they are the aggressive ones. Yeah. <laughs> Kmar, Kmar in the game says everything I need to. Or says everything that needs to be said. I don't need to say it, but it needs to be said. Now Deebs looking for a bomb target. Not sure that they know where to go. But first targets should always be mechs. Well, if you have three or four Ravens, go for the commander. Otherwise, go for the mechs. Like one at a time, go for mechs just to slow things down. Napalm Bombers should be focused on either large clusters of things, usually large clusters of Raiders. That's typically a good target. Though knowing where they are is a little bit tricky, but given that this is a team game, it's a lot easier to do so. At this point, I mean, at this point, there is a lot of knowledge about what is where. And Kmart is actually starting to bomb out these bandits, which is good. Gets rid of the radar as well, slow, or eliminating Scott's information advantage. Well, information in general, not even advantage. But definitely keeping the information for Team Red along the north side. The red team does not have much knowledge of what's going on in the rest of the map, whereas the blue team most definitely does. But Kmar may not have a whole lot of follow-up. And the thing is, DDB's also not following up. DDB's needs to be pushing more. Like, more bombers, more attacks. Like These ravens, these pair of ravens, could be sent out to fire out in mexes. This entire time, they could have gotten rid of about four mexes by now fairly easily. And right now, Skazi actually has the best economy in the entire game. Mostly by energy, but Kmar, while similarly equipped for metal, is not doing well with pure wind generator. The wind generators here are running at minimum capacity, or minimum speed. They are kind of not really working right now. They're kind of worthless. I mean, they can get better, but solar collectors would be necessary for a more reliable energy infrastructure for Kmar. It'll work out eventually, but right now, no. Right now, energy is a huge bottleneck. And that is being my problem. And Skazi just decides to move forward. Figures that, well, one of the players isn't going to be able to defend, and they're right. In fact, neither of the players is really able to defend. Though, the vehicle factory has gone up, and Deebs is trying to take out this raid, but not really going to do much. The Phoenix is trying to go after the bandits, but the bandits are spread out way too far for that to really matter. Scythe, however, is up for Kmar, does work for defense, and should be able to move in. Probably get rid of a factory, or possibly just get rid of all these wind generators for player one. Can't easily get rid of Skazi's power infrastructure, though, being that it is all solar plants. Kmar, however, does manage to defend mostly, though. There is still a bandit coming in here, and that scythe comes in, but due to energy deficiency, it does run out of cloak before it is able to get to the bandit, and the bandit outruns the scythe, nearly kills it, but changes targets to the energy infrastructure that is, as I mentioned, not working that well right now. And the scythe about to move to his death, and down it goes. That scythe. That 250 metal, that really does not work well for Kmar. They do not want to lose that at all. So that is a shame. That scythe really didn't end up doing anything. Kmar is still pushing forward. Interestingly, losing Commander Jr. Not sure entirely why. The other commanders are all morphable commanders, but yeah, that it's using Commander Jr. Now, I believe this is a fairly old game. Quite recently, I'll double check. So I think this was on... Yeah, that old. Yeah, it's 1281. And... I think 1284 or so added trainer commanders. So basically, instead of Commander Jr., you have a pre built com or pre modded commander for every single type. And unfortunately, DDB's not really doing much. I'm not sure what they're doing. I, I've. Like, DDB's is not an inexperienced player, but I think they might just be overwhelmed. I think they might. I'm not sure how. how used they are to the fact that you have to be commanding a lot of stuff across the entire map. I've actually only really seen them play 1v1, and even then, it I'm not sure how strong they are at broad management. 
So I think this may have been a bit more underwhelming than I had hoped for, but they are now going for the vehicle side. So while they're not doing much of the air, the Scorchers are coming in and actually managing to do some stuff to the Thugs. Actually dealing with the Thugs decently well, in fact. One of the Thugs does go down, another Thug about to go down. Or not quite, no, 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 never mind. The Scorchers being pushed back by an outlaw, stopping the assault. DD is going to suicide their units into this, but doesn't really work out too well. And with that, Kmar and DDB's surrender. Wow, that was underwhelming. I, I'm sorry about that. I thought that it was a longer game. Oh. Oh yeah, the timing was a little off. Okay, well. Anyway. That being underwhelming, I wasn't really sure what to expect there. But the next game is going to. What's the next game? Gonna be. Come on. Next game will be Skazi and Yogg-Sothoth versus Forever, and I know you read this, which should be a much more engaging game. That'll be up in just a moment, so stay tuned for that as I get that set up.